day, day of prayer, prayer for the, the legal, legal protection, protection of unborn, unborn children. children. January 23rd, 2023. Day of Prayer for the Legal Protection of Unborn Children. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ is mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. For Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf, not that he might offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm The response is, Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Alleluia, alleluia, our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said of Jesus, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man then he can plunder his house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on Today's Readings by Bob The ministry of Jesus is once again highlighted in the readings. The psalm response urges us to sing to the Lord a new song, 
for the Lord has done marvelous deeds. The passage from the letter to the Hebrews proclaims that the marvelous deed Jesus has done is being the mediator of a new covenant, thus earning us forgiveness of our sins by his death and resurrection. In the Gospel today, Jesus casts out evil spirits. He is able to do so because he is one with his Abba Father and the Holy Spirit. Not one with devil, the letter to the Hebrews continues to point out how Jesus' life and ministry far surpasses the Old Covenant, Old Testament, made with the blood of animal sacrifices and performed repeatedly by the Jewish high priests year after year. Jesus is the mediator of the New Covenant. Not only does he represent the people to God, but also he also represents God to the people since he is both human and divine. His sacrifice came through his own death and thus it was done once and for all. Both parts of that last phrase are important. It was a one-time sacrifice. He cannot die again. And it was for all. What is interesting is the phrases that the author of this letter uses, Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many. Two key words are used, ananegkine and pollen. The first word, ananegkine, can mean take away or bear. Jesus took away sins by bearing the sins of others. In keeping with the Jewish concept of a scapegoat, Jesus had everyone's sins put on him and he took them away by his death. The other word, pollen, is often translated as the many. In the Hebrew concept of the many or the multitude, the meaning is more universal, thus it means for all. Thus Jesus had the sins of all people put on him and he bore them to the cross and as he died, he took away the sins of all people. Obviously, it is up to each individual to implicitly accept the forgiveness which Jesus offers, that is, each person needs to make a decision to accept, and not reject, what Jesus has done. The psalm is an exhortation to lift our voice in song and in praise of the great deeds which God has done. Obviously, the greatest deed is the removal of sin and the restoration of an intimate, personal relationship with the multitude through the death and resurrection of Jesus. The Gospel today follows upon Jesus casting out evil spirits that we heard in last Thursday's Gospel, Mark 3 verse 11. Those who are against Jesus remark that it is by the devil himself that Jesus casts out the evil spirits. Not only does Jesus refute their error by pointing out that from mere human logic that would not work, but Jesus also condemns those who attribute to the devil the work which can only be done by God. Jesus even labels that attitude as a sin against the Holy Spirit, and is unforgivable as long as one holds to that belief, for one is not only giving credit to the devil, but one is denying the power of God. After reading and reflecting on the readings, I have a sense of respect and awe as I realize how God orchestrates things. God has made use of the Old Covenant, which was made with the blood of lambs, to prepare for the New Covenant made with the blood of the Lamb of God. As I reflect and grow in appreciation of the Hebrew Scriptures, I can see how marvelously the Hebrew scriptures led to Jesus' perfect one sacrifice for all. I am grateful, beyond words, for Jesus coming not only to teach and heal, but also to become the Lamb on whom the sins of the world have been placed. By his role as mediator of the new covenant and by his death, he has taken away the sins of all. The sad point is that not everyone seems to be interested in accepting the forgiveness of their sins. They, like the enemies of Jesus, are attributing to the wrong source the compassionate healing that has been done by Jesus. They want to say that God is not the one who brings solace, 
salvation, healing, wholeness. They may not attribute solace, good happenings, well-being, to the devil or to mere human activity, or even nature, but they do not give the credit to God for what Jesus has done through his death and resurrection. What is my response to my reflection? Simply, I must be willing to share the good news, gospel, of Jesus with all with whom I come in contact. I begin the evangelization, literally good news ing, by the way I treat them. I let them experience the love which God has for them by my caring for them. And, when the opportunity presents itself, I will share in words my belief in the God of good news. As I was typing the previous paragraph, I used a phrase good news ing. As I was typing it, I also realized it could be spelled good news sing. That fits in well with the psalm response for today. Sing to the Lord a new song. For the Lord has done marvelous things. May our lives be good, new songs or good musings of the Lord Jesus. May we live as people of the gospel, good news ing, messages to others, the personal question or action for today, how have I accepted the good news and put it into effect in my life? Is my life a new song of praise to God? How can I make the good news more apparent to those around me without sounding or acting better than thou? Who might benefit from hearing a good news song today? Let us pray, blessed are you, Lord God, source of all good newsings and all good news sings. Through your goodness, we come before you with new songs of praise and glory for the good news you have shared with us from the creation of humankind. You continue to give us good news until the time that your good news put on skin in Jesus. Not only did Jesus proclaim your good, news in word and action, he took all the bad news of sin upon himself, and lifted them up to you through his death and resurrection. In doing so, he proclaimed the best good news, forgiveness of sins and restored relationship with you. We ask that we may put the good news into effect in our lives so that others will sense the good news and ask for a greater share in the good news. We thank you for allowing us to be people of good news ing and good news sing. We make this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Master Teacher and ultimate source of good news, who has carried all of our sins and taken them away, and who now is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen.